Hello and welcome everyone once again to Time to Shine Present Truth Ministries. It has been a while since we've been here presenting the messages for you, but today we're here to continue in a new series called By Precept and Example. Now we're here in a different setting because we've been working hard on preparing our home and our family and this property for the end times, for the time of trouble. So we're currently constructing, we start to break ground on our learning center and this is why we're outdoors presenting the messages for you until that building is ready. However, I'd like to begin by explaining why we're doing this series. We have two ministry channels. The first one is Time to Shine Present Truth Ministry, which is where I teach the messages of God through Scripture. We have another channel called A Little Heaven on Earth. Now, the purpose of that channel is to share how we live a godly life within this world. You see, the world all around us is full of pollution, full of corruption, and it's very difficult at times to know how to navigate your Christian walk and Christian life. Therefore, we've decided to teach both through precept and example. And today we're going to begin understanding a little bit of what that means. In Time to Shine Present Truth Ministries, we will be teaching the precept. And in Lit uh, Little Heaven on Earth YouTube channel, we will be showing the example. So before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for once again presenting us with an opportunity to share your truth and share your love to your people. I ask that as we open your word, that your Holy Spirit come down upon us and dwell with us and open our hearts and our minds to have clear understanding of your will for us today. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin by reading a scripture, a quote from the book Conflict and Courage. It's found in page 92 and here's what the words say. Often, the Christian life is beset by dangers and duty seems hard to perform. The imagination pictures impending ruin before and bondage or death behind. Yet, it says, the voice of God speaks clearly, go forward. We should obey this command, even though our eyes cannot penetrate the darkness, and we feel the cold waves about our feet. The obstacles that hinder our progress will never disappear before a halting, doubting spirit. Those who defer obedience till every shadow of uncertainty disappears and there remains no risk of failure or defeat, will never obey at all. It continues by saying these words, Unbelief whispers, Let us wait till the obstructions are removed, and we can see our way clearly. But faith courageously urges an advance, hoping all things and believing all things. I wanted to begin with that because the purpose of this series that we're going to begin on precept and example is to show the preparation that is needed both physically and spiritually for the end times that we're about to enter into. So we want to understand how is it that we should advance even though things seem difficult, even though we can't see clearly the path, even though at times it seems like nothing's working out for us, God still says move forward. So we're going to learn how is it that we're supposed to move forward through this series. And the first step that we need to take is today's focus. Today's focus is to do as Jesus did. Now, what do I mean by to do as Jesus did? What I mean is this. When Jesus was entering into a crisis, what did he do? Those behind the camera, what do you think Jesus did? As he was entering into a crisis, what do you think Jesus did? He prayed. So we can see before we enter into the crisis that is about to come, the time of trouble, we should be people of prayer. Now, how do we know Jesus prayed? Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before Jesus was about to be crucified, he went and he prayed. He took his disciples with him to the garden and he asked them to pray with him. And then he went a little further and secluded himself even more to spend some quiet time alone in prayer. Now, today we're here on our ministry property around the olive grove that we have here. And the reason why we chose this olive grove is to show a symbolism of what it was that Jesus was doing just before his crisis. 
You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Garden of Gethsemane was basically something similar to this, an olive grove. Now, it was his custom to go there to pray. That's why in the time of crisis, he went to where he was accustomed to going to pray, to commune with God. Somewhere we, where he can experience the comfort and the closeness to God. Now, when we look at the picture of how Jerusalem was situated, we see Jesus regularly went to the temple or to the city to preach. But often, as he got tired, he retired out of the city into a, an olive grove, which was nearby. From the city, you could see from the distance the olive grove. And that olive grove was the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is where Jesus used to go to rest after his ministry, to commune with God, to have some quiet time with God, and even in the mornings to go meditate on what God desired him during the day. So here we are in the olive grove. Now, there's something interesting about the Garden of Gethsemane. Within that area, did you know that the Garden of Gethsemane had an olive press? Alright, it was one of the few olive presses around, so everyone had to gather to press their olives there. And in the midst of the grove, there was a uh, a, a unique little garden and it said that usually Jesus would go into that unique garden where he can feel the nature experience the nature now this symbolizes something very particular you see when Jesus went into his crisis he went somewhere where the symbol of Gethsemane was to press olives to press and Jesus as he was in the garden of Gethsemane he was being pressed as the olives are pressed he was being pressed with the pressure of all of the world's sins. And we too know that as we get to the end, we are going to be pressed with all kinds of pressures to choose to turn away from the precepts of God and follow the ways of this world. Now, are we going to fall under pressure as we're being pressed? We need to learn how Jesus overcame so that we too, when that time comes, can overcome. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus prayed. I want us to go to Luke chapter 22. We're going to begin the scripture readings in Luke chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 39 to 44. Luke chapter 22 verse 39 to 44. Here's what it says. And he came out and went, as he was wont, on the Mount of Olives. And his disciples followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou wilt, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood, falling down to the ground." So here the Bible gives us the context of what Jesus was doing. He was praying. And it's not that typical prayer that we do every single day. The Bible says he prayed. And then after he prayed, he chose to pray even more earnestly to the point where blood was dripping down. Imagine on a hot day like this and you start sweating because it's so hot. And that's just water. Imagine the agony of blood pouring out of your sweat glands. This is what Jesus was doing during his time of prayer. He was so earnest in it, so deep in it, that he was sweating blood. Now, why are we trying to understand the, the precept of learning to pray before a crisis? Because no precept, no precept is understood and no example can be shown unless we first pray. So here within the ministry of Time to Shine, we want to be able to teach God's principles teach the instructions of God because that's what precepts are. Precepts are instructions. Precepts are rules. But we can't teach the rules or the instructions unless first we pray for God's guidance. We can't be the example to others unless we first pray for God to help lead us to show the right path. Therefore, we have to start with pray, to, prayer to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives so that we can truly reflect God and show what He desires the world to see. Now I want us to turn to John, the book of John, chapter 13, verse 15. John, chapter 13, verse 15 tells us these words, For I have given you an example, that you should do as I done to you. Here Jesus is speaking these words, 
that he is saying he's given us an example for us to follow in his footsteps. Whatever he did, we ought to copy, we should be doing. So we're supposed to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Now, what did Jesus do before the crisis? The Bible says that he went to Gethsemane and he prayed. Therefore, if Jesus is telling us that he gave us an example for us to follow, as the crisis is approaching, as it's drawing near, what should we also be doing? We should be praying. But just ordinary prayers or should we pray more earnestly? We should be more fervent in our prayers. Our prayer life should be more sincere, more committed, more devoted. And that's how we build a strength and a connection with God to be able to endure His will during the crisis. Now I want us to go to Psalms chapter 119 because we talk about, about prayer. And we know that Jesus, when He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, He said, Not my will, but thine be done. So that's one thing that we should follow. Not doing what we want, but trying to do as God pleases. Now, Psalms chapter 119 gives us another indication of how we should be praying, how we should be communicating with God. Psalms chapter 119, let me just quickly get to there, verse 15. Psalms chapter 119, verse 15 tells us these words, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Now, this scripture doesn't say anything about prayer. It doesn't mention the word prayer in it at all. However, it is secretly hidden inside there, the concept, the, the thought of prayer. How is that so? The psalmist says, I will meditate. Meditate on what? Is it just meditate on anything? It says, I will meditate on thy precepts. That's what the Bible says, thy precepts. So, if we're going to meditate, what does that mean? We need to think. We need to focus. We need to pay attention. We need to also use this. What is this? Our ears. We need to listen. So meditate means to listen to God. But not just anything, but God's instructions. Many times, people think they can go through a crisis just because they hear a sermon that teaches them that God loves them. And because they think God loves them, they think they have the ability to overcome almost everything and anything. That's not so. Because what gives us the strength is obedience to God's will. As we're obedient to God's will, He gives us the strength. If we're not obedient to God, how can He work with us and through us? Therefore, we need to meditate not only on His love, but also on His precepts, His instructions. God is clear. If, if we want to, Him to be close to us, if we want Him to work through us and in us, we have to obey and follow His precepts. So it also says these words, Respect unto thy way. Now what does that mean? We know we have to listen to God because it says, I will meditate on thy precepts. Listen to God's instructions. But what does respect unto thy way mean? What is that part of the verse trying to tell us? You see, the worldly view of respect in these days is basically summed up in this way. We can, dis we can agree to disagree. That means I'll respect your views and your opinions if you respect my views and my opinions. And they might be the same, but they might be different. But let's learn to respect each other and learn to be okay with that. That's the worldly view. But that is not the biblical view. That is not what it means when the Bible says respect unto thy ways. It doesn't mean you do your thing and I'll do my thing. That's not what God desires. What God desires is for everyone to do His will. Because that's the only way we can obtain peace and all the other fruits of the Spirit. So what does it really mean to respect the ways of God? It's not the worldly view, agree to disagree. It can only mean one thing. And we learn what that means in Matthew chapter 7. So I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 will tell us what it means to respect the ways of God. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 tells us these words, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So the Bible is saying clearly here, whatever you want others to do to you, you first have to be willing to do it to them. However you want to be treated, 
you should treat others the same. Why? Is it because this is just common? Is it just the way the world works? Or is it one of the laws and the prophets, which means it's a instruction, it's a precept. Therefore, the Bible is telling us, if we want to respect others, we also have to respect them. We also have to respect. It's respect and respect, both hands, hand in hand. Why? Because this is a precept. Respect is part of the precepts, the instructions of God. Now, how do we know that it's not just, you do your thing, I do my thing? Because the verse tells us a specific clue. There's one particular word that it mentions. And it says it more than once. It says it twice. It says, do. Do is an action word. Do is one of those things where you don't just... Uh, you know, the worldly view is respect and that's it. You stay there, I stay here. But the biblical form of respect is in getting involved, participating, working together. All right? So when it says for you to do and the other person to do, that means both of you are uniting together. So if we're to respect God's ways, it means we're supposed to work together with God under His precepts. Now, Prayer, how does this work in prayer? How does this connect to prayer? Prayer is basically a relationship, okay? Prayer is a relationship. How is it a relationship? It's our way of interacting with God. And many times when we pray, what do we usually do? We give God a nice big list of things for Him to do. And we tell God, do this. We tell God, do that. And we give Him a whole long list of what He should do. But we never stop to pay attention and listen what God wants us to do. So, when the Bible is telling us for us to meditate, to listen to God, that means to stop talking so much in our prayers. Spend some time just listening. And how do you do that? By meditating. And then as you meditate, as you study the Bible, God speaks to you, God communicates to you. And then part of that relationship is respecting, meaning the do. You do and He does. Together you work. Now, if we were in a relationship human to human and all I do is talk and all you can do is listen, it's not a pleasant relationship. What if you tell me something and I choose not to do it? Would you like always being around me if I never follow your, tell you, you do what you want me to do? No. What makes a relationship pleasant and what makes a relationship last and work is that you're both willing to listen and you're also willing to do and work together. This is how our prayer life has to be with God. We have to listen to God, but we also have to do as God says. So, prayer is ab about listening and doing. Now, why is it about listening and doing? Because both of those things combined create something in our lives. It causes something to stir in our lives. And what is that? It starts with a big G, and then an R, and then an O and a W. It causes us to grow. When we listen to God and when we participate in what God wants, it'll cause us to grow and to learn. And what that does is that develops our character. And our character we know that is, one of the, is the only thing that we take with us up to heaven. Therefore, if we want to prepare for the crisis that is ahead, First, we, be, we need to be willing to grow. And how do we grow? By developing a relationship in prayer with God. And it's not just telling God what to do, but it's entering into an earnest relationship with Him by seeking what He wants, by choosing to listen to Him. And that's how we learn to obey Him. Now, there's a quote in Child Guidance that I want us to read as we get close to wrapping up. Here's what it says in page 31. As a humble child of God... Learn in the school of Christ. Seek constantly to improve your powers that you may do the most perfect thorough work at home, both by precept and example. So inspiration is telling us that we need to learn from Jesus, learn from Christ, the school of Christ, which is his example, his life experience. His life experience shows us how to live the example, but it also shows us the precept the instructions, so what to do and how to do it. Psalms 119, once again, verse 27. is going to be our last scripture for, for today. 
Psalms 119, verse 27. What does the Bible say here? Make me to understand the ways of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. You see, we can't just understand God just by reading the Bible. We can't understand what God desires from us by just reading the Bible, by just going to church. We need to ask God to help us to understand, which means first, before we enter into study, we need to pray, to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. Otherwise, we can interpret the Bible in the way that we choose. And that is why we have so many different religions today. That is why there's so much conflict today and no unity, because people choose to enter into a relationship with God, always dictating to God what they want, how they want to understand the Bible, how they want to live. And they never question or ask God how He wants them to live, what He desires of their life. And they expect to be able to overcome difficulties. Well, I'm here to tell us all today that in order for us to be prepared for the crisis, we need to seek God in prayer. And seeking God in prayer means that we communicate with God. We listen to Him. We obey His instructions and we follow His example. What does this verse tell us in verse 27? It means that we communicate, we have time talking to God. Before we study, we invite Him, we ask Him to teach us. And then we also communicate of God. So we communicate with God and we communicate of God. What does communicate of God mean? What does it mean? Doing His will. What's His will? To keep everything for yourself when God teaches you some good things? Share. Sharing. It means to share. So we communicate with God. He teaches us wonderful lessons. He strengthens us for the, for the challenges ahead. And then we don't just hold that to ourselves, but we share with others. We communicate of God. And as we're doing that, we're communicating with God, communicating of God. God is just flooding Himself within our lives. And it's an overflow so that everyone can be blessed and nourished by the love of God through our life. And this is how God does and we do. The two do's go together. And that's respecting God through our prayer life. Now, one final quote before we end off with a word of prayer. It says this, We have to pray with our eyes on God, not on our difficulties. Challenges are going to come. Difficulties are going to come. But when we choose to learn how to pray with our eyes on Him and not focus on everything else around us and meditate on what He wants us to do and press forward in that, in faith, then God will remove those obstacles out of our way and allow us to keep pressing forward for His honor and His glory. Let us close with a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for teaching us that we need to seek you before anything else. Lord, before you give us instructions, we need to be willing to come to you for them. So help us to understand your will. Help us to understand your, your messages for us and to learn how to prepare for the coming crisis. Lord, we want to be ready, but we want to do it your way. We want to follow the example of your son, Jesus Christ. So help us to look to his example, to his lifestyle, and copy and follow His path, His plans, and his, his way of doing things so that we can be victorious as He was. In His name we pray. Amen.